Hi, in this example we're going to use Dask to give a scikit image to analyze a large stack of imaging data coming from uh, some biological samples. Uh, this is intended uh, not to actually do any work, but just to serve as a, a prop piece to start conversation with some of the scikit image developers. So, uh, here we have one image out of about 10,000 uh, that has something to do with neurological data inside of a Drosophila fly. Uh, all of the data, there's around 10,000 images living here on Google Cloud Storage, similar to S3, and you can read more about that information, more about the data at Nalia Farm. Okay, so this is one image. We've run 10,000 of them. Uh, we're going to use Dask delayed, together with Scikit Image, to read uh, not the full data set, but around just a thousand images. Then I'm going to stack all of those single images into one large Dask array, and then stack all of those images together into sort of one one array. Uh, so we just did that lazily, and we can see here our data is size 1,000 to 1,000 images by around 6,000 by 6,000, the resolution of each image. Uh, they're currently chunked uh, image by image, and based on the kind of computation we want to do, we want to change that chunking. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up a cluster. So that array would be too big to fit in RAM. It's around 42 gigabytes. Uh, but we can ask for you know maybe 20 machines, each with around 6 gigs and uh, Kubernetes will go out and get, get, get that for us. So those machines are now there for us. Uh, we're clicking this link here. This will give us access to the dashboard. I like to have these side by side so I can see what I'm doing while I'm operating. Uh, and this is again just a, sort of a sample of the data set. If you wanted the full thing, you'd uncomment this line above. Okay, uh, so let's connect to that cluster and let's uh, load that data. And then we're also going to rechunk it so it's not just by image, it'll be sort of a more of a brick shaped. So that's going to go off, send all of our lazy computations to the cluster, and then ask that cluster to persist that in RAM for us. So uh, X is the array uh, sliced by image, and then Y is the exact same data, but now it's chunked uh, in sort of more brick-like fashion to allow us to do uh, different kinds of computations. So let's go ahead and compute, and this is going to take you know about a minute. So it's it's loading a lot of data from Google Cloud Storage. It's then splitting up that data and rechunking it. So this is creating a lot of NumPy arrays that are size 200 by 200 by 200, spread about in memory. Let's wait a moment. You can see here we're reaching getting close to the, the memory limits of any individual worker. If we wanted to, we could ask for more workers uh, up here by, uh, by scaling this up a bit. Okay. So now, again, let's go ahead and look at you know, maybe one, of our, one slice of our data. Uh, and so now we can get both a, an image with you know, some, some small number of accesses, you know, a few hundred, uh, or something like a time series. Uh, again, which is just a few accesses. Uh, so the data is now sort of distributed in a nice way. So, second like image folks, uh, you now might want to do some work that you care about. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, some things you might want to look at are, are operations like map blocks, just to map some function across every individual piece, or an operation like map overlap, uh, which uh, would help you, of course, uh, do some, some operation across the entire array uh, by specifying some overlapping depth. So uh, that's it. Uh, hopefully this is useful. Uh, I'll post a gist of this notebook uh, in the YouTube uh, page where this video is hosted. Thanks for your time.